here with the Bears in foray, prepping for a, quote, business trip to face Section 8 winner Ricori. Bears come in 10 and 1 on the year with a defense that's been a problem for most offenses this year. Byron Holtz teams to 9.7 points a game while putting up 35. McCorry will be a tough task. Spartans are 9 and 2 on the year, making its 12th state tournament appearance, winning a title as recent as 2019. It's a strong group that Byron head coach Ben Halder says is very similar to the Bears. Halder knows they'll be going up against an experienced group, but the Bears are more than ready. They are really well coached. They have fantastic players. Um, and, you know, they've been there before, so they have that on their side. But, you know, sometimes that's not always great, too. Sometimes not knowing what's going on is a good deal. Our kids have, have been really focused and dialed in this week. So, you know, we're expecting a good football game and a, and a, and a game that we, we'll be in at the end with a chance to win. It's a brotherhood out here. So we trust one another. We trust each other that we're going to make the play. So just do your job, and that's our biggest thing all year. Now this is Byron's first state appearance since 2003. This group's been waiting for its shot, and the Bears are not throwing this one away. We've been ready from the start. Ever since fourth grade playing, we're all ready. Us uh, group seniors, uh, we've really wanted to do this for a long time, and now's our shot, so we're going to get to 1-0. So that game will be tomorrow at 4 p.m., but getting things going in the morning with a nine-man semifinal. Kingsland taking on Fertile Beltrami. Knights come in 12-0 behind one of the most potent offenses in all of nine-man. The duo of running back Bo Wiersma and quarterback Kaleem Ryland has been tough for anyone to stop. The team averages 48.8 points a game. Fertile Beltrami, though, is right there with them, 12-0, averaging 45 points. Falcons are making its third straight state appearance, finishing as runner-ups in 2021. This game will be a shootout, but in talking with the Knights, this group is ready to pick, put on the chain mail, pick up the sword, and go to work. Going to the bank three years in a row is pretty good, but I feel like if our team's doing our jobs, doing the little things right, bringing that dog energy that we have, I think we'll jump out on them early and, you know, hopefully take home the victory. It might be a little bit bigger stage than they're used to, but it's the same old game of football. Um, still got to do all the things we've done all year, and I think that's we've been getting that across to them. They are treating it like a business trip, and uh, they really want to be back, back next week, and, and so do I. Again, this game kicks off at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow at the bank. All the highlights and post-game reaction right here at 10. The college football, the NSIC, announced its all-conference teams. Winona State Warrior Clay Schnefter earned first-team defense honors. Linebacker leads Winona State in tackles with 85 at Mark Good for sixth in the conference. He has 53 solo tackles and three sacks on the year, appearing in nine games this season. Also want to shout out Rochester native and former Century Panther Mark Leonard. He was named to the offensive first team. Leonard, a tight end at Sioux Falls, has 38 catches for 440 yards and four touchdowns this season. Warriors also have quite a few players on the second team. Wide receiver Silver Campbell, offensive lineman Noah Pappas, receiver Caleb Skelly, Trey Borsk, linebacker, and D-lineman Kiwan Vingrowski. Another warrior here is Enrique, Enrique De Leon, a defensive lineman, and Darius Manuel. Also some more familiar names from Rochester, from our John Marshall Rocket, Yante Vini. He's a part of the seventh-ranked Minnesota State Mankato team. And Century Panther, Jack Fisher, my receiver at Augustana. He's made 26 catches for 502 yards, four TDs this year.